I believe that nationalism is the most powerful political ideology in the world. I believe it's no accident that we live in a world that's populated with nation states. I think that the United States is a thoroughly nationalist country. Americans are very nationalistic. When you hear Americans talk about American exceptionalism, American exceptionalism is American nationalism at play. When Madeleine Albright, who is a card-carrying liberal, says that we are the indispensable nation, we stand taller, we see further, just think about those words, we as opposed to the other, we stand taller, we see further. That means we are superior to other. There's American exceptionalism. Madeleine Albright is saying we Americans, we as a nation state have the right, we have the responsibility, and we have the power to run around the world and reorder the politics in different countries in a liberal way. But that's very nationalistic thinking. Very important to understand that. Why do I believe that nationalism is more powerful than liberalism for one very simple reason having to do with human nature. You have to decide when you think about human beings whether you think they're social animals at their core who carve out space for their individualism or you think they're individuals who form social contracts. Liberalism assumes that we are individuals at our core who form social contracts. Nationalism assumes we are tribal from the get-go. We are born into nations, we're born into social groups, we're born into tribes, and we carve out space for our individualism. Liberalism is wrong and nationalism is right. We are tribal animals, right? We belong to groups and we have tremendous loyalty to those groups. This is not to say we can't carve out room for our individualism, but we're social animals. So. When you get the United States of America going into a country like Iraq or Vietnam or the Soviets going into Afghanistan, nationalism is automatically going to come to the fore in that country you have invaded because those people are going to say, we are a sovereign nation state. We believe in self-determination. We do not want the United States coming in and telling us what to do. And think about how we react to the Russians interfering in our elections. They do not have any right, we believe, to interfere in an American election. It's a violation of our sovereignty. That's nationalism at play. Nationalism dominates liberalism. American foreign policy in the era of liberal hegemony has a principal goal, has three goals, but the principal goal is to promote liberal democracy around the world. It's to knock off authoritarian regimes and turn them into liberal democracies. Okay, That means that the United States of America is going to interfere with the sovereignty of other countries. And this is going to cause problems not only in the Middle East with the Iraqs and the Irans and the Saudi Arabias, it's going to cause problems with the Russians and with the Chinese. If you go to Russia or you go to China today and you talk to them about whether they think it's a good idea that America is promoting democracy in either Russia or China, they will tell you in no uncertain terms that this is categorically unacceptable. They recoil at the idea of us interfering in their politics as much as we recoil at the idea of them interfering in our politics. This is nationalism. Realists basically treat states as black boxes. There are no good guys or bad guys in the realist story. And realists assume that states, even your own state, often has to do terrible things because the principal goal is survival and survival requires you to sometimes do immoral things for purposes of maximizing your chances of survival. There are no good guys and bad guys in the realist story. Therefore, it's quite easy for a realist to put him or herself in the shoes of the other side. Liberals, on the other hand, divide the world into good guys and bad guys. I'm sure that most of you in this room share that view. You believe that liberal democracies are the good guys and authoritarian states are the bad guys. And when you have that worldview and 
you're in a liberal state and you're dealing with an authoritarian state, it's virtually impossible for you to put yourself in the shoes of that authoritarian state. And in fact, you think that you're a benign hegemon. I've talked to Mike McFall, who was the American ambassador to Moscow from 2012 to 2014. And he was shocked by uh, what happened in February 2014 when the Ukraine crisis blew up because he told Putin and Putin's lieutenants on numerous occasions when he was the ambassador that they really had nothing to fear from NATO expansion because the United States was a benign hegemon. It had benign motives. And I believe that Mike believed that completely. But from the Russian point of view, the United States did not look like a benign hegemon, especially since the United States was talking ultimately about regime change in Russia. But it was, I believe, almost impossible for Mike to understand that because he's such a thoroughgoing liberal. Whereas for a realist like me, it makes perfect sense. This is why George Kennan and virtually all the realists said from the get-go that NATO expansion is going to lead to disaster because they could put themselves in the shoes of the Russians.